Hi, this is Norman, introducing a new painting of St. James's Park in Newcastle upon Tyne, the home of Newcastle United Football Club. Um, I studied in Newcastle for four years, so enjoyed, well, when I was studying in the evenings in the life room at the university, I could sometimes hear the roar from the, from the stadium as the goal was scored. I supplemented my student days by selling paintings of David Ginola and um, Faustino Spria, heroes of the day. So, yes, I've got some attachment to this part of the world, certainly, and to this stadium. Um, looking around the stadium from the outside, there's no particular point where you can get a really good view of the stadium in its entirety um, from a distance. You're always quite close to it, and... Uh, particularly from this point of view, which I ended up settling upon, you're, you're really pretty close to the stadium. So trying to enclose that view into one image is challenging. So I use the panoramic feature on my phone to do the best I can to enclose everything I want to include. But it does cause some distortion. And um, so then I use this uh, correction tool on my phone to correct the angles of distortion. So you see the building on the extreme left is tilting inwards, and now it's straightened up. So uh, this then is enough for me to start working from. It gives me a general idea of where things might go on my painting panel. This painting panel is 20 by 16 inches. Um, it's primed with gesso and then leftover oil paint. and the drawing on it is just with oil pastel. I've just started using that for quickness and ease of drawing. Really simple drawing and then blocking in colours. Because this is a an end of the day painting. And so the light is going to be changing pretty fast from day into night. And um, so I just really want to get big blocks of colour down. If I don't get anything else down, that's fine. Um, I've divided the board... As you can see, with two horizontal lines to make a more horizontal shape for me to work in. So as the light changes, um, it's pretty exciting. This this part of the painting, I'm trying to slam colours down with quite thick paint, is is really pretty exciting. This warm evening light slashing across the subject and the the uh, changing skies, the shapes starting to somehow echo the this little study is called ascension in the end but i like the way that the lines of the clouds follow the lines in the stand um, so as the painting progresses there's quite a lot of people chatting to me as i'm painting and i'm trying to juggle with the changing light which changes to more subtle versions and then eventually into twilight and i really love how the dark areas of the stadium are activated by the interior lights, the warm yellowish, orangish interior lights. Um, so this is included in the little study, the sense of interior light in the stadium as well as the light on the stadium. I like, if possible, to get colour throughout the canvas in the shadow areas and in the light areas. As much colour as, as I can possibly cram in throughout the painting. So this then is the finished version of Ascension, um, 20 by 12 inches, uh, cropped down later in the studio. And this is the basis for all the information that I need for a larger studio painting. I really enjoy that sense of, um, you know, stretching your arms out and re really feeling bigger presence in the painting um, so some work is done from photographs trying to decide upon where to crop the image so I've decided to just crop it just at the top but leave more space at the bottom so that means that from this initial photograph there needs to be some changes if you notice the building on the left is um, well I've removed the dark warm band of colour from the side of the building, which I thought was a bit too demanding. I've straightened things up and I've added 
more space at the bottom of the canvas and that space needs something to happen in it so I've taken some of the figures and road from another photograph and just stitched it onto the bottom and then simplified it a little bit and that's pretty much good enough for me to get started. Um, I'll play here with different filters in Photoshop just to warm things up or cool things down and to lighten the shadows. Lighting the shadows is always wonderful because there's always more information in the shadows than you realize. Um, and finally, I'll apply a grid on top of the image in Photoshop once I've decided upon the proportions. Um, so then I'll grid up a board. This hard board is just tacked to the studio wall. It was an old painting. Um, I think just done in acrylic and gesso. And so it's just been cropped down from an old painting and I'm using that and I've gridded up to transfer the drawing. The drawing, you might just be able to see it in some of the pictures, is just again done with oil pastel and then just piling the paint straight on. So no thin paint, no diluted paint, just pile the paint on. Here's my palette set up, ready for business, with uh, lots of nice clean white paint ready in the middle. Tubes of paint and brushes at the ready and a nice big screen with my image on ready to paint. So I found in this painting, I really just enjoyed picking up the paint with my fingers. When you've saved paint and not thrown it away, then you really feel you can be generous with it. So most of the marks on this board are made with my fingers. Felt fantastic. And probably this guy is to blame. Um, these are, this is an early Matisse painting showing really direct brush marks. They're just thick and luscious and left as they are. Here's a few copies I've made of early Matisse paintings, which, first of all, are tremendously brave in colour, really strongly designed in terms of shape, and also very direct in their paint work. So I was really loving just getting the paint, picking it up with my fingers and plastering it on. In other parts, the paint is put on with a palette knife or with a brush, but mostly at this stage with the fingers. As the painting progresses, I'm really just trying to get the big things in first, those big blocks of colour, not to concentrate on all the little details that are all very interesting. Um, but there does come a stage where we need to develop more of the finer structure, the finer shapes. And in order to do that, in order to have the confidence to do that, I need to be more familiar with the subject. When you're working on site and the subject is right in front of you, you just glance at it and there's more information than you can possibly need. But when you're working after the event, particularly if a few weeks or a month has passed since you were in front of the subject, you can become like you're copying a photograph and that's just terrible. So what I wanted to do instead of doing that is I'll take the time to re-familiarize myself with what it's like to be in front of the subject and so that I can remember it and, and feel it. So I'll take the photographs that I have, even photographs of sides of the ground that I'm not painting because I want to be able to understand the structure. Of it. So I might even look on Google at, at the overhead view of the ground, um, you know, different sides of the ground. I'm painting the Milburn stand, um, but this is a view of the corner and the Gallagher end. Um, and then I'll zoom in on different sections of the ground. And I'm looking for the things that interest me. I'm not looking to make just a, a copy of what I see, but shapes that interest me or to understand the structure or what sits in front of this and what sits behind that. So the most, most simple shapes that I can find and how they all fit together. Um, I'm also looking at details. Like while I was painting, somebody came up to me and talked to me about these, these gates that you can see. Now they look a little bit incongruous, but they're the original gates from St. James's Park. So when they built this fantastic new stadium, 
they brought the old gets and put them there. So it's important for me that I include them in the painting. Even though they're just a few squiggly marks of paint, they're an important thing. So I'll omit many things, but there's some things that I really do want to make sure I include. I think Walter Sickert said something about all you need to do is indicate that you've seen it. So all these drawings are, are for that purpose, to give me confidence to then launch in, as I'm doing here. Here I'm um, getting some of the verticals in, those slightly finer lines, to get some of the structure back. And now I'm starting to layer paint over paint, still trying to keep it as fresh as possible, um, but suggesting windows, for instance, or uh, stanchions. Sometimes I'll also just sit down and write things for myself. So on this sketch I've written orange to pervasive, lighten top section and add stanchions. And then on the bottom it says interior, orange red, orange needs breaking. So those are notes for myself. So then you'll see the action upon those. So um, the orange is too pervasive. So here I've lightened it into more of a yellowish, brighter colour in the top section of the of the stands and um and broken up the orange on the interior with some green. Um so those have been actioned. And this has been a helpful move actually looking back because previously the whole of the stadium and everything on the ground was dark against the light of the sky. But in switching it and making the top of the stadium light and maybe the sky a little bit darker, there's an interchange. So the stadium, the ground is dark, then the stadium is light, then the sky is dark against that, and the sky is light over the other side. So there's a more interesting light and dark interchange, which I didn't really plan, but it was more of a point of breaking up the orange, but, it's, but that was fortuitous. So that brings us to, well, well, then I just have to, if I'm going to change one part of the painting, you have to change another part of the painting. So because now that the stand is very light and warm in colour, some of that colour needs to be reflected into the ground, which is what this stage does. Um, and some of the sky on the extreme right, that teal colour, is reflected in the glassy side of the stand too. So when you introduce a different colour, a changing colour, it's good to reflect that colour in other parts of the painting. This is the same finished version of the painting, but a more subtle photograph. Um, my old teacher, Scott Noel, said the better the painting, the harder it is to photograph. So um, hopefully it's a very striking painting, but hopefully it's subtle as well. So hopefully none of these photographs do it justice. justice. <laughs> Let's hope. Here are some details from the painting. I, I don't know about you, but I really love to look at these close-ups in Raking Light. And it reminds me of um, Monet's paintings of Rouen Cathedral. Incredibly groundbreaking for the time in the way that the, the paint is encrusted and there's its overall sense of dissolving the form in the sensation of the light. So I love that kind of idea where the light takes on a a greater role than the form itself. So here it is in the gallery, Hancock Gallery in Newcastle upon Tyne. This is 2023. Um, the painting is 58 by 29 inches. And um, hopefully it gives some sense of the wonder and grandeur of St. James's Park. <laughs>